Greetings trackers. I'm in the middle of a dirt road and uh, there is a path that comes down right there from the forest above and right in the middle of this dirt road is this beautiful bobcat scat and this one's pretty much a textbook bobcat scat um, so I'm gonna get a little closer and show you some of the details first thing to note is location so this is a dirt road it's an intersection with a well-used animal trail and uh, bobcats tend to like to mark in areas like that there's another trail that goes up right here up the hillside or up this embankment and that's a location that bobcats prefer so they like to mark on trail intersections and that's what this is um, it's an intersection of a couple of animal trails with a dirt road so it's kind of a typical location and this is just your classic textbook bobcat scat and I'm going to show you some of the details that make it that so here's a ruler for size and I'm going to use the one inch side so you can see the diameter of this scat and uh, it's less than an inch they can be up to an inch I'm going to put on a glove here so bobcat scat is really firm so if you were to pick up one of these and try to squish it it would not squish very easily in fact these things are hard as little rocks so I can't squish them um, some trackers call these Tootsie Rolls because they have the appearance of a Tootsie Roll um, primarily because of this segmentation right here note the segmentation on this piece and on this piece right here um, again they're hard as rocks I cannot break those they're, they're sitting in the middle of a dirt road, they're really dry, and um, I can't break them apart. So, the uh, appearance is called Tootsie Roll by trackers because of the constrictions in them like this. Um, and also because sometimes they can be one long piece. This is not one long piece, but this one shows another characteristic of feline scats. And that is that these little pieces look kind of like just little balls, little uh, marbles. So they are breaking apart on those segment lines, and uh, they look like little marbles. Um, with a mountain lion, they're a little bit more along the, the size of a golf ball, or smaller actually. But, you know, they look like just a pile of balls, little golf balls. Um, in this case, they look like marbles, but that's because this is the smaller of our ca uh, wild cats. This is the bobcat. So the appearance being called Tootsie Rolls is one characteristic to look for. The other thing to look for is that the ends are blunt. So note that the ends don't have any pointy parts to them. There is a little point on this one right here, but it's not big. Um, canines have more of a tapered point to them than bobcats and, and mountain lions do. So that's one thing to look for is the tapered point, although that's not always true. Um, but generally speaking, if you have a textbook scout like this, it will have a blunt end on it. Um, and it will break apart on the segments often. They kind of look like uh, little concavities in the, in the segments where it's broken apart. You can see the little concave area right there where the other little bit was in there at one point. Um, but, you know, and often they just break apart into marbles. Literally. Um, you might see this end right here where there used to be another one, but that's not always the case. So just look for it. Um, look for the hardness, the, or the super hard, dense, packed scats. And I'm going to try to crush one of these because I want to show you the contents, which is probably parts of prey. But uh, note this grayish material that comes out when you squash it really hard. Um, that's characteristic of feline scats too. But also there's a lot of fur in here, and that's probably... Um, from either rabbits, squirrels, mice, wood rats, you name it. Whatever the bobcat has been eating, there's going to be fur in there. And uh, there will be fewer of the less, uh, I mean, of the um, bone chunks that you'll find in larger predator scats like your cougar and your, and your um, mount, uh, coyotes. But there is fur in there. There is a very dense packed material. So this is super dense it's super dry inside their digestive system takes the, the moisture out of their scats really well so you're not gonna um, see something that falls apart super easy 
uh, that often. Sometimes you do, and in fact, I've got a video showing a mountain lion scat that was confirmed with a trail camera that actually shows that. But um, that's one thing to look for is that gray stuff. Look for the denseness, the hardness of them, the, the ball-like shape, the, the Tootsie Roll appearance, the blunt ends, and the placement at trail junctions all help you to identify this as a bobcat scat. Sometimes they will make a little scrape with their hind feet and deposit the scat in it. In this case, this is hard, hard packed dirt road with gravel and there's no chance of seeing a scrape on here even if it had been made. Um, if this was in forest stuff, you could see that or sand or something that was a lot easier substrate to actually uh, read. Um, but on this substrate, you're not going to see a scrape. Um, so again, this is a bobcat scat. It does have those characteristics. The other thing to look for that I forgot to mention is that there's often a smooth outer coating to it. So the feline scats have kind of a mucusy coating when they come out. And so when it dries, it looks super smooth on the outside like this. And, you know, it's not very rough looking. Like when you look at a coyote scat, you'll see the individual hairs that are in there, but you don't see that with this. Um, you see the outside being super smooth, almost like it's been, you know, lacquered or shellacked. And that's because there is that mucusy coating that comes out on the outside of the feline scats. Um, I don't know the name of this grayish material. I've <laughs> hoped to learn the name of that someday, but, you know, I, at right now I don't know what it's called. But it's something that comes out in the feline scats and helps you to tell them apart from those of coyotes and, and uh, foxes that are also in this general size range. The mountain lion scats are going to be bigger and uh, you'll be able to tell them apart mostly by size, but, you know, uh, some of the, the smaller ones are going to overlap with huge bobcat scats, too. In my area, this is about the normal size of a bobcat scat, which is less than an inch. It's about three-quarters of an inch diameter. So hopefully that has helped you to learn a little bit about how to tell what a bobcat scat looks like. And I thought this was such a perfect opportunity because this thing was was just a classic bobcat scat. And I was hoping to show some of those characteristics, and this one had all of them, and I hope that helps you in your own adventures outside and and there's an ant right there okay hope you enjoyed see you on the trail